Hello, everyone, and welcome to Chapter 12 of Book 2 of the Royal Ranger series, The Red Fox Clan. Let's go ahead and get into it. The days passed, and time began to hang heavy on Maddie's hands. She went hunting with Damone, which was a welcome diversion. The young captain offered her the use of a bow, but she declined. It wasn't a good idea to let anyone, even a captain of the castle guard, know about her skill with a bow. Most young women of her age and social station could shoot, but her ability was far beyond what might be expected, and that could lead to questions. It was vital that she protect her secret life as an apprentice ranger, so she thought it best not to show any skill with the bow at all. And since she wasn't sure that she could fake being less of an archer than she was, the best way was to use her sling exclusively. At least that wasn't known as a weapon of choice for rangers. Damone was a capable shot, but she could see that she was far better, and she was glad of her decision. She bagged two large hares with her sling, and he shot a young deer, bringing it down after stalking it for half an hour. The deer would go to the castle kitchens, as would the two hares, and would provide meat for the main dining hall. Maddie was glad he elected to end the hunt then, rather than continue on, killing for the sake of killing. Damone hunted only for the table, not for sport or for trophies. She liked that in him. Additionally, she enjoyed his cheerful company, and they spent three pleasant hours together while they hunted. But with Horace and Gillen absent, and more than half of the castle garrison with them, Damone's free time was limited. He was in command of the remaining troops, and he took his responsibility seriously. Maddie regretted that they had little time to spend together, but appreciated that he attended so conscientiously to his duties. Her mother, too, was busy. Horace's absence meant that a lot of the administrative work he usually undertook now fell to her. Maddie regretted that they had no time for more practice bouts with Damone and Mykeru, although she knew her mother did manage to fit in several sessions with the Swordmaster. She rode out to Warwick and Lou's farm several times, switching over to Bumper to patrol the area. Warwick reported that there had been no sign of lights in the old abbey since she had been there last. She rode up to inspect the building once, but aside from the cold ashes of an old fire, doubtless left by travelers, there was no sign that anybody had been there in recent days. The fact was, Erluin was a far more peaceful fief than Redmont. This was in part because of the relatively large garrison at Castle Erluin, and that the area around it had been settled for many years. Redmont, by comparison, was on the outer fringe of the kingdom, closer to the Hibernian Sea, with its pirates and smugglers, and the border with Celtica. There was far more going on in Redmont Fief, more action more activity. There was more to keep a ranger and his apprentice occupied and on the alert. Erluin Fief was boring by comparison, especially for an adventurous young woman like Maddie. The result was that after a few more days, she became restive and unsettled, and was looking for something to occupy her mind. The answer came in a conversation with her grandfather, whom she visited most days sometimes for an hour or so, at other times, if he was tired, for a few minutes. Have you explored the castle? He asked her one day, after she complained of being bored by the enforced inactivity. She shrugged. I grew up here, she reminded him. I think I've seen everything there is to see. He smiled and tapped his finger against the side of his nose. Ah, but what about was what isn't to be seen? She frowned. What isn't to be seen? She repeated, not understanding. It's rumored there are lots of secret places within these walls, some inside the walls themselves. Secret places? You mean tunnels? She asked. Her interest sparked. Tunnels, yes, and stairways. It's rumored that my grandfather had a secret way out of the castle, a tunnel that led under the moat, Duncan smiled. Seems he had a girlfriend in the village, and he liked being able to sneak out to see her. Gillen said something about that. Where is it? Maddie asked. He shook his head. 
I never had time to look for it when I was younger, he said, but it strikes me that it might be useful to know about such things. I imagine it would begin somewhere in the cellars. But where? You said secret stairways as well? Maddie prompted him. Most of these old castles had secret ways to access the towers, usually by a narrow stairway built inside the walls. Can't see why Erluin would be any different. There must be here somewhere. He looked around the room, indicating the thick stone walls. Matty rose and prowled around the room, stopping to tap on the walls every few meters or so. They sounded disappointingly solid, she thought. How would one go about finding such things, she mused, half to herself. Duncan shrugged, the movement causing him a slight twinge of pain in his injured leg. The castle library might be a place to start, he said. Ask for old plans and sketches of the castle. Look for anomalies. Such as? He rubbed his stubbly chin. His servants hadn't shaved him so far this morning. Well, look for rooms that shouldn't be the same dimensions but aren't. Walls that are shorter than the rooms above and below them, or adjoining them. Look for variations in their measurements. Sometimes that will indicate the presence of a hidden chamber. And in the cellars and lower levels of the castle? she said. Duncan nodded. That's where I'd start. She stayed with him for another half hour. The conversation turned to other matters, but she was distracted by the idea of secret stairways and tunnels continuing to pop into her mind. Finally, she rose and took her leave. She kissed him gently on the forehead and moved to the door. As she laid her hand on the latch, he stopped her. Give my regards to Master Oldred he said. She looked back at him, her head cocked to one side. Oldred? The head librarian. Been here for years. He should know where to lay his hands on the old charts and plans of the castle. The library was on the first floor of the keep, in a large, well-ventilated annex set on the western side. High-level windows admitted the sun, letting it shine down on the stacks of books and scrolls, that were packed into shelves twice the height of a man. Oldred was a thin wisp of a man, with long, unkempt gray hair, cut short in the front, but hanging halfway down his back. He was dressed in a monk-like scholar's robe, with a long hood hanging at the back, and a belt made of silk and cord. It occurred to Matty that most scholarly types were small in build. Heavier set, or taller men, tended to become warriors. When Maddie entered, Oldred was presiding over the library from a mezzanine balcony that overlooked the rows of shelves, sitting at a large table that had several volumes and scrolls stacked neatly on one side. Your Highness, he said, smiling a welcome, what brings you to my domain? Please, call me Maddie, she said, smiling in reply. Your Highness is far too formal. He inclined his head pleased by her friendly and informal approach. Maddie, it is, then, he said. What can I do for you? The king said you might be able to show me the original plans and sketches of the castle, she said. He regarded her with a knowing look. Looking for secret tunnels, perhaps? She raised her eyebrows in surprise. Yes. How did you know that? Uldred sighed. It's why most people want to study the plans. So far... Nobody's found anything, he told her. Not that too many of them kept at it for long. They became bored and skipped through, skipped through the plans quickly. Never find anything that way. Well, I'll try to stay focused. Can you show them to me? He shook his head. I've got too much work right now, but I can show you where to find them. That'd be fine, she told him. Then follow me, he said. Rising from behind his work table and leading the way to the wooden stairway that descended to the library floor. He moved quickly, and she had to hurry to keep up with him. He preceded her to the eastern corner, and stopped, indicating a section of shelves packed with rolled scrolls and large leather-bound volumes. They're all there, he said. I'm sorry I can't let you take them out of the library, but there's a table and chair here you can use to study them. Oh, and a pen, ink, and paper, if you want to make notes. She walked to the shelves and studied the array of scrolls, hesitating as she sought a place to start. 
They're labeled, Aldred told her, seeing her uncertainty. I'd start with the lower levels. Doubt you'll find a tunnel at the top of a tower, after all. She grunted a reply and peered more closely, seeing the labels on the shelves under the scrolls. She reached out for one. Cellar level one, she read aloud. That's as good a place as any. I'd say so, Aldra told her. Then he turned away. I'll be back at my desk if you need anything. He paused. Oh, and put everything back where it came from, won't you? Maddie nodded, taking the heavy rolled scroll from the shelf and blowing a little dust from it. Obviously, nobody had looked at it for some time. She moved to the table he'd indicated, untied the ribbon securing the scroll, and rolled it open. There were half a dozen lead weights on the table, and she used four of them to hold the scroll open, then bent over it to study it. Engrossed in her task, she didn't hear Aldred as he walked quickly back through the shelves toward his lofty perch. She pored over the chart, initially not fully understanding what she was seeing. She lowered herself into the chair and thought for several minutes. I guess the best way is to get accustomed to all these drawings and measurements, she said quietly to herself. After all, it's not likely that there'd be a label here saying, Tunnel. I'll need to suss it out. She spent the next hour and a half going over the charts and plans until she was familiar with the style of them. By the end of that time, her eyes were watering with the effort of concentration. The lines, measurements, and notes were beginning to swim before her eyes. Reluctantly, she rolled up the parchment scroll she had been studying and retied the ribbon around it. She replaced it in the shelves and picked up her sheets of notes, then retraced her way through the shelves to the ladder stairs that led to Aldred's office. Mounting them quickly, she coughed to gain his attention, and he looked up, smiling. Finished? She shook her head. Just starting. I'll be back tomorrow. Thanks for your help. She turned and left the room, and he watched her as she walked briskly through the rows of shelves to the entrance. Well, good for you, he said softly. All right, that is going to be the end of Chapter 12. Thank you, everyone, for joining me. And I'll see you all next time in Chapter 13. God bless, and have a good one.